you, Stefan. Thank you all for coming here. And uh, let's start. My name is Olena Slyshkova, and I'm doing backend development. And during the next 20 minutes, I'm going to talk to you about the secure profile. This topic came to me the previous summer. Uh, to be honest, it was very unexpectedly, because at the time I just have finished a big implementation together, of course, with my colleagues, and I had in plans to have a calm, measured time. Uh, but uh, my project manager came to me and said, uh, you know, <laughs> we have three related POCs. Could you please take care of one of them? Okay, good. <laughs> what is POC? POC, it's a um, pure freedom, an art of architecture, and the dark forest in the same time. Okay, I took a look on that three POCs that we had, and none of them told me anything. Uh, and I took that one that seemed to be most nice by name. And it was the right choice, because it's very, very interesting task with, with a brilliant architectural decision and with very interesting implementation details, which I'm going to talk to you now. But let's start from the beginning. So all this implementation uh, stems from the JDPR. What is JDPR? JDPR is a General Data Protection Regulation, which is a regulation. In other words, it's an administrative law which unifies the data protection in all European countries. GDPR requires companies to implement reasonable data protection measures to protect uh, consumers' personal data against uh, loss and exposure. GDPR, of course, contains all the description of how the personal data has to be and could be processed. Um, we started to talk about this a little bit more than a year ago, and it was introduced two years ago already and became enforceable this year, this May 2018. And that's why, of course, I know for sure that all related changes are already coming to all projects. And the same, of course, has happened with my project. And the, the first uh, corresponding change touched the user personal data. Let's take a look. In details, what a user personal data means. So, user personal data consists of two parts. The first one is a CID. It's client identifying data, which is a pair of user login and passwords. And the second part is the user profile, which I think it's quite clear. It's such information as username, gender, email, and so on. And all the initiative of the secure profile is about to remove all this sensitive data from AEM out of AEM to the secure storage. And what kind of the secure storage? We don't talk about this now. It's not important for us. But what is important is that we don't have any more in AEM, in GCR, and the home users where we used to have this, we don't have any more any user information. No, neither client identified data nor the profile. So what can we do? Because the thing is that uh, to use the out of the box authorization mechanism, which, which we would like to use, of course, uh, we do need a standard IAM user. With a standard IAM user, I mean the node and the rep user, uh, and the uh, home users with a rep user type. Uh, and now I would like to discuss a little bit in details what is the difference between the auth authentication and authorization, these two things that always come together. So the Authentication, it's about to recognize who is the user. So, and th this individual is who he or she claims to be. And 
the authorization it's a process of giving access uh, to the user to the uh, system objects based on user's identity so now I am going to show you the architectural approach which made this possible. The approach is to have for every real client the corresponding IEM user, but without any sensitive data. How we do this? Uh, when the user is logging in, we authenticate him in the secure system. What does it mean? That means that we need to know who is that user and the secure system provide us with this information. Secure system provide us with a technical ID. And this technical user ID, not identifying user ID, we use to create the standard IEM user which we definitely need. And this um, Technical ID provides us a possibility to uh, build a one-to-one -one relation between this standard IEM user having only this technical ID and the system user, a secure system user, which has all the needed information. And so having this, we can always request all we need about this user and what we definitely need to, to request the permissions from there. So also we can manage permissions here and that's why after this we can use the out-of-the-box authentication mechanism of AEM. Okay, it's very, very general <laughs> and uh, I would like to, to tell a little bit more in details how we could implement it. But first, let's discuss the thing which we obviously need here is the custom authentication. Authentication, yeah, <laughs> true. So, um, the authentication mechanism. Every single request which comes to AEM goes through the Slink authentication mechanism. You can just for fun put a brick point in a place, which I'm going to show you, and you might be very surprised how many requests come even while opening one page. So, every single request comes through the Slink authentication mechanism, which in his turn has a list of authentication handlers and um, calls the extract credentials methods of each of these handlers. What we obviously need here is to implement the authentication handler interface. It has only three methods, extract credentials, request credentials, and drop credentials, and the one which is more interesting for us, no for us now in the context of our secure profile is extract credentials method. Okay, so uh, what we do need here in this method, let's, let's recall, we do need to recognize who is the user. So uh, we have requests uh, and we need to uh, return the authentication info, which is nothing but a map. We should put their user credentials. So what we are doing for this? Uh, when the user is logging in, we just send the request to the secure system. Having the real request from the user, we have the, the real user login, real user password. Without storing it anywhere in JCR, in AEM, we just send it directly to the secure system and to receive back the technical user ID. What we are doing with this technical user ID? We create a standard IEM user under home users as we are used to do this. We create this user. Of course, if this user already exists, we don't do this. We use the existing one. And what we also need here to manage permissions. So, uh, for example, we can request the list of closet user groups to which the user should be assigned, and we do it here. We assign the user to the closet user groups and we, ma we manage permissions so how it's correspond to our logic and generally we are done with this so what else we do need is to create simple credentials and put it to the authentication info and return it and um, this is the core of this uh, custom authentication profile in the cross-section of the secure profile 
And I hope, at least, that I suppose it seems to be very simple. It seems, it looks very, very transparent, but I can say you as a fact that it, the way to this decision was not so evident. And if you're interested in the custom authentication and uh, in the secure profile in the perspective of custom authentication, you can take a look on our stash because this decision is already in use in other projects. In my project, we just use it for a POC, but this implementation is coming. But this is a thing that, that you can find in our code base and you can investigate it uh, if you are interested. But it's not only this. What we also need, it was the first part. We discussed the, ah, oh, no, yeah. Uh, so we discussed the first part with the general idea and the custom authentication. But what we also need is to, tra uh, to transfer the user profile out of IEM as well. Uh, probably you might think, okay, what's the problem, what's the challenge? Here it's no problem, you just can create your custom component, custom page, and please request this information from wherever you want. Okay, good. But there is a but. <laughs> In our case, we are dealing with IEM communities. And we want to uh, use communities out-of-the-box components, which we would like to change as less as possible. So you don't know too much about communities, so don't worry, it's okay. In the not talking about communities itself, but uh, discussing what is relevant for us now, uh, we can imagine communities as a huge set of out-of-the-box components, which we obviously would like to reuse, every single of which requests the user profile. But uh, with our approach of the secure profile, we don't have any more, at least we don't want to have any more any profile data in GCR in IEM. Okay, what we can do? We can customize. What we can customize? Every single uh, community component, <laughs> it's a huge set and it will lead us to create it from scratch. No, it's, it's, it's not a pos possibility here. Okay, then taking a deeper look we found out that all roads lead to the single point which is requesting a user profile resource and the home user profile from the JCR. And that is generally the point when, where we would like to get control. But how? But Thanks to Apache's link, we have this possibility, and it's called Custom Resource Provider. Um, I think you already imagined what we should do. We should do just implement the uh, Resource Provider interface. What we are interested in here, first, it's a provider roots property. This property is the path of the resource, of the requested resource, starting from which our resource provider will work. That means, in our case, it's home users community, so that means that under that tree, all resources requested will be processed by our resource provider. The second thing that is interesting for us now is get resource. It's, I think, easy to imagine what we should do here, having the path to the resource, we should return the resource. Okay, what I would like to pay your attention on here, uh, you might think, you might see that the provide the roots is quite large. It's a home users community, it's quite a large tree, and it's not only profile nodes we have under the tree. And we, but what we do want, it's only to get control over the profile nodes, but not all others, like for example, tokens or uh, rep policy, for example. What we should do in that case? When we don't want to get control over this resource, we just return now. <laughs> Slink treats now as an inability to provide the requested resource. Uh, and in this case, it just uh, takes the next resource provider for the chain and this res uh, resource provider, which in our case is a default one, will take care. In our case, it will just return the needed resource from the GCR. 
So for node profile uh, resources, it's absolutely good for us. When we are dealing with the resource of the profile nodes, we just uh, use our custom logic here. It also seems very uh, easy and absolutely great. But I would like to share with you, with you some details which you might face with. And Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we definitely uh, have what we wanted. We transferred the user profile out of AEM. We don't have any more any profile data. And all requests come, which come to the profile resources are processed by the custom resource provider requesting all the needed information from the secure system. And now about the challenges that I told you about. Okay, no, it doesn't work. So what we also need here, it's our custom resource, obviously. And um, the, the resource is an interface. We should implement it uh, for sure. And this uh, interface has a lot of very useful methods, as for example, get value map. But the challenge here is in the adaptive methods. Of course, we love this method very much, but the challenge is in what hides behind these methods. And here, everything depends on how this resource will be used in your client implementation. In my case, client implementation is the implementation of the uh, community components. So, uh, unfortunately, some client codes uh, goes out of the Slink level and start working on the JCR level. What does it mean for us? It means to, so it's adapting this resource to the nodes. What does it mean for us? For us, it means that uh, we should implement our own, own nodes and uh, property, provide our node and property implementation. And what is worth that Everything depends on how this client implementation will, will work with your resource. So as long as it stays on the Slink level, as easier it will be to implement it. As much it will go to the lower, to the JCR level, as more difficult it will be. And the uh, worst thing here is that you can, can, in some situations, face with that situation that the resource or um, that the profile, in my case, and in your case, it could be something else, uh, nodes is requested directly on the GCR level. And that means that this implementation, of course, will not, will not work because it uh, works on the Slink level. But uh, I, I don't want to discourage you to try this, to uh, implement your customer source provider. I just wanted to show you that um, it's very powerful, providing the possibility to implement the customization on such a deep level. And it's just a, like a weapon, which we should use uh, where it's uh, appropriated. Uh, comparing with the custom authentication, I didn't find any example in our code base uh, using of the uh, customer source provider. If you used it or you know some details, please tell me because I also are very uh, interested on in this because as I told you already, it came to me as a POC. So this implementation was done only on the POC and now the project is coming. Uh, so I um, would like to encourage you to try this and we can discuss it which challenges we, we might face with, and uh, I ho hopefully next year I can uh, tell you how it will be uh, solved and provided to the production. Okay, so uh, during this short presentation, uh, we discussed the GDPR and we discussed the custom authentication together with the um, custom resource provider. And what I generally wanted to do today is in a cross section of the, this task, of the secure profile task, show that it's not gods who make pots, that we are doing this. Uh, and I hope you find some interesting information for you. And I thank you very much for your participation. <laughs>